Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Karen Valoria Miguel and if you didn't get a chance to see my first YouTube post, I'll put a link for it for you below. On today's post, I'm going to be talking about pricing. So many times people have approached me who are makers and or knitters and crocheters and they are also curious about how to start selling their products online or at craft shows. But one of the things that tends to stop them in their tracks is they don't know how much to charge for them. It really isn't a matter of like me looking at it and saying, you know, I'd pay 20 bucks or 30 bucks for that. It is a matter of first calculating some key things. So I'm just gonna walk you through it. But before that, here's some do's and don'ts. And if you watch to the end, I'll also be providing you with a really handy and simple calculator tool that'll be able to, you'll, you can plunk your numbers in and then you'll come up with a range of what you can charge or might consider charging for your handmade items. So let's get started. Now, as a handmaker, I totally understand why people get a little bit intimidated about pricing. Because really, as a maker, you probably started as a hobbyist. You haven't been used to putting a price to it unless someone's given you an offer. So if you've decided that you'd like to jump into the realm of business and selling it for a fair price, then it's always good to keep in mind your end game. What do I mean by that? It means that you don't want to end up losing money. You want to be sure that you make some sort of profit from it so that the entire process of going into business, into handmade, doesn't burn you out and it doesn't make you upset. In fact, it makes you joyful that you're able to make something, share it with the world, and also have some sort of income from it. So here's my first do. Do know how much your materials cost. Pretty simple, right? So for example, if you are making purses, like handmade pouches with maybe a zipper on it, then know how much the material costs per item and know how much your zippers are costing per item. So for example, if you're buying your zippers in packs of three, then know how much the cost is for each individual zipper. And if it costs you one meter to make your pouch, then know how much that meter is and include the tax too. Make sure that you include the tax so you're not eating the tax in your, in your profit. The next do is document. Be sure that you document along the way, whether it be one notebook that you keep aside or one spreadsheet that you keep to keep track of how much each project ends up costing you to put together as a whole. That way, if you have to reference it or if you have to buy in bulk, then you have an idea of how much you're spending. And it's, an, it's also an organized way of keeping track of your things because eventually, once you establish maybe a line of items, then all of your pricing and all of your materials are in one place and categorized categorized by product. It's very handy. My third tip is to make sure you do budget to pay yourself for your own labor. And why? Not just because, you know, you're greedy. <laughs> A lot of handmakers think that, oh, it's so greedy to charge yourself. You know what? You deserve it. Everybody is paid for their for their work if they were to work in the outside labor force. So you should really be factoring in how much it costs you to be making things. The second reason why you also want to include your labor is because ultimately, if your business gets much bigger and you have to hire somebody to make your stuff with you or for you or even components for you, you need to already have set aside an amount for labor because it's that amount of money that is going to be paying any staff that you need to hire to help you make things. So it's good that you've set it aside already. My fourth tip is take a look at your competition. Now we all kind of do this on our own. Uh, we, we look around, we see how much people are charging for similar items. It's actually very easy to do on Etsy and it's one of the drawbacks of Etsy, but it's also a pro of Etsy as a seller because if your stuff is on Etsy, there's a lot of competition, but it's also very easy to see what other people are selling their items for that are similar to yours. So go ahead and take a look. Make sure you also take a look at what they're making their things out of. Is the quality of the material higher or lower than yours? Is yours bigger or smaller? So factor all those things into your pricing. And do you have like a unique thing about your item or do they have a unique thing about their item that they're able to price a little bit higher? These are things that you also wanna consider as well. My fifth do. Once you've gotten started where you are selling your items and you've assigned a price and you're, you've taken the leap, you've gone to a craft show, you're selling it at that price or you've listed it online at that price, 
do take into consideration increasing or lowering your price if you feel that may be listed a little bit too inexpensively or perhaps it's listed too high um, it's easy to take the price down because you can always offer a discount or lower the price but in increasing the price you want to do it at the right time and the right time often to do something is perhaps at the next show or when you release a new version of your product or a new color or at the change of season when you might be changing a little bit of the product because if you already have established customers you don't want to upset them if you just randomly increase your price and there's really nothing new to it there can be some exceptions to that rule um, for example, when my business started taking off too and I ended up getting a lot of press about going to Hollywood, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then watch the first post because it'll tell you, I'll tell you all about it. But um, when my, the sales in my, my store started spiking like crazy, I was already making items out of premium handmade yarn. I mean, at the time I was selling my hats probably for what was considered wholesale price. I absolutely couldn't keep up with the, de the demand at the price that it was at. And by increasing the price, I also brought it up to like an industry price. The next do is do take ownership and be proud of how much you are charging for your items because there will be customers who will come to you and they don't see the value of what you are doing. Know what you've put into it and you know that you've fairly priced based on the materials that, that are going into it. So if they don't feel that it's worth it, that's okay. And you can let those people go because your ideal customer will pay you what the value of your item is worth. My next tip is try not to heavily discount because you don't also want to drive the behavior where people are always just waiting for your stuff to go on sale. Sales can be limited to maybe the end of season and maybe only your very best customers that are loyal to you and maybe they just want to add to their collection. And my final do is do be kind to yourself. Don't beat yourself up if you have to make adjustments in your pricing or in anything in your business. If there's a lot of trial and error, nobody has it down pat. Everybody's trying to figure it out, even the huge, huge companies. So be kind to yourself because as an entrepreneur, you may have other people who are going through the same things, but this is your business. It's your process, it's your passion. Just roll with it and everything will fall into place. Having said that, it is time for your free gift from me. I put together a little tool for you and I'm going to give you the link and all you have to do is click on the link. That link will bring you to a place where you can download the pricing tool and watch the video because I'll walk you through how to fill in each of the squares so that at the end of the tool use, you can take a look at what the range is that you might be able to start pricing your product. And the beautiful thing about this is you can play around with the numbers as much as you want, add different factors, costs, whatever, and come up with a price that feels just right for you. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you tune into the next one and don't forget to get your free download. Let me know which tip you like the best in the, in the comments button. And remember to please subscribe because I would love to hear from you and know what you think. Thank you so much. Bye everyone.